If we turn to the next game, Scotland v Wales, what a performance from them at Twickenham. <laughs> Be so Scotland to go and lose, but this time I think they're slightly different. What do you think? And I think they could go and win at Murrayfield against Wales. Uh, yeah, I think I think Scotland, obviously, from last week, um, will get huge energy from that. Um, I still don't know how good that English team was, so we'll, we'll, you know, it's stating the obvious that we'll know more this weekend. Scotland's attack was superb. I think their variety in their game and the pace they played with. Um, obviously, the first Van der Merva try was sensational. It was a piece of individual brilliance and power. Um, but two years ago, um, this was a game they lost. Xander Ferguson was sent off. Um, they were really frustrated. It was a game they probably would, would have won. They started the game really well. Wales got back into it and, and ended up beating them. So, um, yeah, I think this has always been the case uh, of, of with Scotland is is their next game. They're capable of big performances and, and getting results. It's about consistency, and that's probably what's frustrated Scottish the Scottish rugby fans. So, I think on Saturday there's a different feel about this group, and if they can get uh, impose themselves up front, Wales on the other hand, they're a side that are you know going to be hurting after what happened as number of changes in Warren Gatland's side. He's gone for youth. Uh, he's brought in some real kind of uh, energy into his side. Um, so it's a really interesting game. It's, it's, it's for again, for obvious reasons, it's a massive game for both sides because obviously Scotland win this. They go to Paris in a couple of weeks with two wins under their belt. They'll be starting to think we're going to compete for a championship here for Wales. Um, it's a long road back if they lose this game, isn't it? Because, you know, <coughs> Obviously, they're at home to England next, but if you lose your first two games, it's very hard to kind of generate a bit of momentum. But it's early doors for Warren Gatland, but Gregor Townsend this week, there'll be a real buzz about that Scottish camp. And uh, I think they're probably going to kick on and, and get a performance again and build on what they did at Twickenham. Matt, Gregor Townsend said there's more to come. Do you believe that too, from what you've seen from Scotland last week? Um, I think I'd fall into the Dowling Thomas category. I, I actually think it's the biggest game for for the Scottish team in many, many years, and that may be going right back to the 90s. See, there's no doubting the talent of this side. Like you, you, As Quinny said, you watch them play over the years on, on certain days. They play wonderfully. Uh, two years ago, they, beat, they won a Twickenham and they won in Paris. But they then go and lose... Um, games they should win. As Alan alluded to, this is exactly what happened last year. They won the Calcutta Cup uh, two years ago. They won the Calcutta Cup and then they came home against a very poor Welsh side where ill-disciplined a player sent off and they lost the game. So they're up and down, up and down, up and there's no consistency. If this Scottish side is going to fulfil their, their undoubted potential, uh, this is a massive week for them. They have to win. No one expects Wales to win. I think it's a very, very poor Welsh side. We know where Welsh rugby is, as sad as that is. It's not good for Irish rugby that Welsh rugby is in the state it's in. It's not good for any of us, but they are in a terrible state. But for Scotland, they have they have got a group of 20 to 20, you could say 23, but I think it's more 20 really high-quality players. We're still concerned about their second rowers and so on, but they came out on, sat on uh, last week at Twickenham and they did the job. Now at home, they have to do it. I, I'm concerned that Gregor says, and I've got great respect for Gregor, but I'm concerned he says he's more in us. What this Scotland side, we've been saying this for years, talk very humbly and let your let your actions do your talking for you. You know, let let because they, they always talk it up and then the next week they failed. If they just say, we know where we've been, but we, we want to show everyone we're good enough and we're going to try our guts out, that's great. Everyone will go with you. And that's what they've got to do. They've got to perform at Murrayfield and get some wins in a row. Don't expect them to win the championship. I think that's a tall order. But they certainly have to beat Italy and, and Wales <coughs> in Ireland a really good run for their money. Dan, do you see Scotland with more depth than whenever you played against them? You know, Do you think they're good enough to win four games in this championship? Um, I probably don't, uh, if I'm being honest. Uh, I'd... I'd like this the scottish team typically in the last couple of years um come out in one or two games in the tournament and you know have a, have a really really good performance um 
the guys alluded to it there, the consistency is what worries me. Um, I'd like to see them go on and push on after this and then have a serious game against France in a couple of weeks. But um, <clears throat> I'd just be a little bit worried and, and they'd have to kind of prove me wrong about that, that uh, the consistency of uh, performances is there. Um, Finn Russell, he seems a wee bit more controlled over the last year or two. Would you go along with that? Yeah, I think he's he's definitely playing more with a, more of a maturity. There's always um, that excitement about him trying something different and and uh, you know throwing a crazy pass or a crossfield kick or something like that. And you don't want to coach that out of the guy. Um, but I think yeah, he was better last week, and he's you know there's there's brilliance in Finn Russell, and we've said it so often, and and that kind of sums up what. What Dan and Matt are alluding to as well, you know, he's part of that inconsistency. You know, it's it can be brilliant some weeks and then really poor the next week. So, as a fly half, and I know this from playing in the forwards, you know, by and large, you want your fly half to keep the ball in front of you, particularly in your own half. And you know, the game has changed a lot now, and teams work their way out. But Finn Russell tries some silly stuff at times. Um, but you see his execution when he gets good quality ball and good delivery and he's forwards deliver in front of himself. He is brave with the ball in hand. And I love that about him. Uh, he gives some wonderful passes. That last try that Van der Merva scores, some of the Finn Russell passes there were, were, were beautiful passes out in front, inviting players to run onto him, the timing perfect. So, yeah, I think Finn Russell needs to remember and understand that um, Saturday is about a result. I think it's, for me, it's not about a performance. I think Gregor Townsend, and you said it, is, is saying there's a lot more to come. They just have to find a way to win this, to get another win under their belts. And Finn Russell, understand when the moments are there to, 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 to attack and to come up with some brilliance because Wales are in absolute the doldrums and desperate and they will you know if we thought Ireland, uh, we thought they were going to come really hard at Ireland early last week they did in the second half but they're going to go after him and he needs a big game on Saturday yeah he does Matt I knew you'll have a word in this what did you make of him going into Farrell's face when Evan Van der Merwe got over for that try well mate, there's two parts to that if Finn Russell had 50% of Johnny Sexton's discipline and drive and fitness he'd be one of the greatest tens the world's ever seen. He, his natural talent is freakish. Um, running an Owen Farrell and giving him a gobful, well, you know, you live by it, you die by it. So, you know, a, a bit of sledging. And, look, they're probably mates. They've been on the blinds tour together. We don't know what he said, but, you, you know, look, all fair in love and war. If you can back it up, if you talk, if you talk at the talk and you don't walk it, then it's a different story. But... I think there's a lot being made of it that, that doesn't really need to be, because Van der Moer was spectacular, and you missed it, and, you, and Owen did miss a tackle. Owen's a fantastic defender. I, I don't think there's a lot in it. In, and look, if you're going to be put off by sledging, then the sledge is won. You know, if sledge, sledging's part of the game, and if you listen to it and you're put off by it, well, that's your fault. You should just laugh and give him something back. You know, if you if you ever played a bit of cricket in Australia, you learn how to sledge because from day one, that's what you get. And, and and the the whole point of sledging and doing that is to put you off your game, and I don't think it put Farrells off the game. I think it was just a a little byproduct. I quite I quite <laughs> enjoyed, to be honest. Dan, what would you have done if he had done that to you? And how impressed have you been by Finn Russell? Yeah, I have been impressed. Um, I mean, he's always had that kind of spark and that kind of. Um, you know, extraordinary kind of aspect to his game. Uh, I like I like that he's a little bit more pragmatic in the in the game in the weekend and kind of played the percentages a little bit more. And you know, you only need to bring that that uh, X factor out right, a couple times a game. And, and and I think he's sometimes guilty of uh, forcing a little bit. So um, I like the little bit of maturity in the game. Yeah, I mean, as far as the sledging goes, um, Farrell wouldn't be. Uh, and be, he'd be a big man for the sledging himself, so he's pretty well used to it. Um, yeah, I mean, like the from from playing Scotland and England, both both teams would would be pretty into that. So um, I know it's probably ten on ten, and the cameras caught it, so it's probably bigged up a little bit more. But I can tell you, there's a lot of sledging going on in international rugby, so uh, they'd be both well used to it. 